Hello, my name is Pastor Daniel Humphreys, and I want to welcome you to the Zion Fellowship channel. And I want to share a little thought with you about a rest that can come with knowing and following God. In Exodus chapter 33, Moses was speaking to the Lord about their upcoming journey in the wilderness. And Moses said this to the Lord. He said, if you're not going to go with us to the land, then I don't want to go. And God replied to Moses in Exodus 33, and he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Now, God told Moses that not only would he be with him on their journey and his presence would go with him, but he also said, I will give you a rest. And it's that idea that there is a rest available to us when we are continually dwelling in the presence of God that we can rest in that. Now, rest does not necessarily mean a, a ceasing of all activity, but it's a rest in following God, in hearing his voice, in being in his presence and doing his will. We can probably all remember uh, times in our lives when maybe we would face a new situation, maybe a job, a new job or so forth, and it could be a, a bit overwhelming because it was so new. Remember a friend of mine sharing a story with me of how he was working at a salt factory and a part of his job was stacking heavy bags of salt. And he told me that there was a secret to stacking those bags. You start for, with moving the bag from a very high place from a taller position, pull it off and maneuver it into a place as it's falling. And it actually takes very little effort when you learn how to do it. Well, one day, a new guy started working at the factory who was very big and strong. And everyone thought, well, he won't have any problems working here. But there was a problem, is that he didn't know the secret of how to maneuver the bags. And so what he ended up doing was picking up each 70-pound bag and holding it while he figured out where he was going to stack that bag. Needless to say, the new guy got very tired, even though he was big and strong. While my friend, who was a little smaller than this guy, he wasn't breaking a sweat because he knew how to move those heavy, heavy bags. And so you could say that my friend had come into a rest, not because he wasn't doing anything, because he was still positioning those heavy bags, but he had learned how to do it in the best way. And there is a rest that God wants to bring into our lives where we follow him, we learn to hear his voice, and he will show us how to follow him in rest. You know, where we are still working, but he shows us how best to do it because he's brought us into a rest in following him. But something we can understand as we read with Moses is that this rest is often linked to the presence of God. Israel in their journey, they came out of Egypt and Moses led them through the wilderness and they entered the promised land with Joshua and it started to overcome their enemies. But they're never, they never really came into a rest until David, a man after God's own heart who knew the presence of God. He was a man who lived in the presence of God and he led Israel into rest. It was not that they never fought any battles. He fought many. But David learned to rest in God, in his direction, in his counsel, in his battle plans. And that always brought him into victory. And God wants to do that in us, in his church, in the nations. And this is so important because there's a lot of unrest in the world. We're all very aware of this unrest because of the circumstances that are taking place. And we know that the Bible says that these kind of difficulties are only going to increase in the last days. But what is going to make a difference in our churches, in our communities, in our lives, are those who are after God's own heart, who have learned to dwell in his presence, who know his rest and his peace, and then they can impart that to other people. Now, peace can be a synonym of rest, 
And the Bible tells us that the peace of God is very powerful. In Romans 16 and verse 20, it says this, it says, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. God wants us to experience his peace, to know him as the God of peace. In the Old Testament, we're introduced to the God of peace in a very interesting way. It was in the days of the judges, there was a young man named Gideon. And the Lord appeared to him and called him a mighty man of valor. But as you read the story, you realize he could get a little nervous about following the Lord. He would ask the Lord for signs and he wanted confirmations and so forth before he could face the enemy. In one sense, I don't blame him as he faced a hard situation. And as the angel of the Lord appeared to him, Gideon wanted to give, give him an offering. And so he placed that offering on the rock and the angel touched it and fire came up from the rock and consumed the offering. And I want to read what this says in Judges chapter 6 and verse 22. And it says, And when Gideon perceived that he was, the, he was the angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, for you shall not die. And Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, and he called it Jehovah Shalom. Now, Gideon was a man that God wanted to use to work in the nation of Israel to deliver it, to give them rest from their enemies. And so how did God meet with Gideon? He met with him as Jehovah Shalom, or the God of peace, or God is peace. God enabled him to go out and conquer Israel's enemies because he met the God of peace. Now, he knew peace in a measure. He was still a little nervous, but God brought him in to his peace. And, you know, God wants to bring us into the fullness of peace. When I think of the fullness of peace, I think of Jesus in the back of that boat on the Sea of Galilee when the storm was raging, but he is resting. He's asleep. When the disciples were terrified because of what they saw with their eyes, he was at perfect peace because he knew the plan of his heavenly father. He had the perspective of his father. He was dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty, and he could be at perfect peace. God wants to bring us into the fullness of his peace and rest as we come to know him more. Ephesians 2 and verse 14 says this. He says, For he is our peace and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. In one sense, it is the peace of God that enables us to go within the veil into his presence as we rest in the Lord and his plan and his ways. Then he leads us to victory so that we can come before that ark and rest under the shadow of the Almighty. And so let's ask the Lord, Lord, may I come into your rest. May I know your peace in a new way. Let your peace bring me within the veil so that I can dwell in your presence. God bless you.